G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, the VAG is looking pretty damn schmick at the moment. I have got quite a lot done. Now, I know I haven't done an update for a while. Um, I have been working on the ship every now and then, but it has been pretty busy. This is my busiest time of the year, so there's a lot on. And it's a bit windy outside too. We'll have to um, deal with that. <laughs> now, I have got the superstructure is all cemented in now. The, um, the davits are on. You can see those. I'll use my pointy thing. See my big fat fingers. The davits. They're all on. They weren't too hard to put in actually. They uh, they went on reasonably easily. You have to be careful because they're all sort of slightly different. So you get the right one in the right hole. But the davits all all went on nicely. And I had pre-painted everything on the sprue with the Steiner Res White. And then once I'd um, turned the davits off, there were quite a lot of sanding and fitting. And then the glue sort of marred a little bit of the Steiner Res. I found a valley ho. I've got a valley ho white here, which is exactly the right match to Steiner Res white, and um, it painted beautifully. I haven't been a huge fan of valley ho, but I must say, um, hand brushing it, um, no thinner, just a slightly damp brush, it um, it laid down beautifully and it blended in perfectly with the Steiner Res white. So that's um, got it here. If you've got Steiner Res and you need to do some touch up. I mean, you can touch up with Steiner Res, but it's kind of thick, and if you've got detail, you've got to be careful. But um, Steiner Res Black is pretty easy to, to sort of feather in and touch up, but with the white, this one here, whatever numbers that is, if you can read it, that's it. So that uh, that particular model colour, Vallejo, Vallejo, however you say it, that, um, that matched perfectly, and I've been using that to touching up all the way through, as you're about to see. So... The davits went on, here's my pointy thing, uh, the minor armament went in, no troubles at all. Um, I fixed the um, the boat ramp, well actually it's more, a, it's more of a passageway and a bit of um, ramping, but actually it, it is a ramp in some ways that, well it's, it's, it's a decky thing, it's a big spider webby thing, whatever that is. It joins to all the davits, so there's a bit of work involved to get your davits to fit and then to push them over and get them to connect to this whole um, bracing sort of formwork thingy <laughs> but that all went together I mean it just took a bit of patience it wasn't that hard really I've already got uh, a couple of little boats in little boats in there yep they went in um, they were basically that step anchors are on although I will be changing those to be white um, I sort of had pre-painted them um, with the dark darker colors same as the armament and then I'd um, check my reference photos and of course they they should really be in white the same as a whole so I will paint over those I'll get that done but um, everything's in, funnels are glued in, um, the fence are glued in, it's all looking pretty darn good. I'll uh, even put in little things like searchlights and there's little binnacles up here which I think is a compass and there's lots of little things that went on uh, as I worked my way through the instructions trying to see what I had done and what I, what I sort of haven't done yet. So this is where I've got to. Now, I want to move ahead now and what is missing are the booms here that go on the side of the hull which are for the um, torpedo nets. So I'm going to put those in. And now that I've got these lovely davits on, I'm going to make up the lifeboats and we'll put those in as well. And that will radically change the look of this ship. It'll start to look fairly complete. So all right, so without any more waffling, <laughs> I'll um, get on with that and let's have a look at how to put those booms in. Putting on the... Um torpedo net booms. Now, I have already done them on this side. So you can, uh, you might be able to see them there. It depends. Well, it's a little bit too bright. Yes. So they are on there. But quite frankly, I think there's a problem here in the instructions because the booms don't go on until step 15. Okay. Um, according to the instructions. And um, never having done torpedo booms before, I haven't really thought ahead as far as painting everything had gone until I got to this stage. Now, by step 15, you have got your primary armament and your secondary armament and all the little um, boat davits on. You have a lot of fiddly, pokey, outy things that are going to break because you're going to need to, you know, get this over on its side so that you can actually see what you're doing to get these on. Now, if and when I do another ship with... Um, with the torpedo net booms, I'm going to do it first up. When I actually glue the whole harvest together, even before I paint or do anything, I'm going to put those booms on, quite frankly. 
um, because it's going to be a lot easier to paint, one, and two, basically, trying to do them later on when you've got lots of fiddly things on your boat is too hard. Unless, of course, you're one of those people that um, builds a whole model and tries to paint it. How the friggin' hell you do that on a ship, I don't know. How you'd get into all the tiny little bits and pieces and paint them, God only knows. The only way I know how to build a ship is you do everything in sub-assemblies and you paint every part up and then you bring it in. I mean, you know, like things like the wooden decks and everything, you've got to do it that way, essentially. Well, if you're building like I am, where you're using laminated wood decks, you have to paint parts, add parts, build up superstructure, and away you go. And usually I would leave the armament until absolutely the end. Now, to make things a little bit easier at this point, because I'm going to have to put um, those uh, booms on, is I have been a little bit tricky. I have only friction fit the... Um, the barrels and breeches into the supports for the guns so they can be removed basically we're going to be knocked over luckily these ones here rotate so I can simply rotate them out the way and I was able to do that too at the stern here because those ones rotate but unfortunately these ones as as we discovered when we looked at the instructions and saw the uh, rather strange looking thing that said get a hot screwdriver out and, and apply it to your model. Yeah, they um, there's no way the little retaining rings fit underneath those little supports for the um, for the guns. And therefore you're kind of buggered when it comes to having them rotate. There's just no way you can do it. So I ended up just um, cementing those in in the positions that um, suited suited my needs. But anyhow I'll um, anything that can break off I will take off and I do a lot of this things I don't commit to superstructure or putting in anything or even the funnels only just went in this week I basically leave everything off until the absolute last minute I thought well I'm past that level and now you know now's the time I have to commit now I'll get cemented in and the reason is I will just knock things off all right so we're now going to have to push that side down so we can see what we're doing here the uh, secondary armament, I mean, in hindsight, I wouldn't have put that on. <laughs> I would not have put that on. But again, they, um, the instructions give all of that a lot earlier on. I mean, way back. Uh, there's, there's the davits, and even before the davits, the davits were uh, step eight, and well before that, step five was the, um, the secondary armament there. So that's obviously the way they thought would be good to build this ship. But quite frankly, to now step 15, come in and do these um, torpedo um, booms for the nets. Nah, you could leave them off because quite frankly, they were found to be totally ineffective and they were only on for a first few years. I am doing the very early version of this ship because I'm painting with the greens and the yellows and everything. So yeah, all the photos show them with them on. Um, I haven't found a single photo yet with the actual net, but the booms are on there. So that's how I'm doing mine. I'm not going to try and replicate the net. Okay, well, what I need to do now is I'm going to roll this over. I'll put something soft underneath it so that it doesn't, um, you know, so at least a little bit of protection here. I'll try and put something that pushes against the hull there. So I'll, um, I'll find something around here. I've got some sponge around here somewhere. Cover my sanding sponges. And if I put those down, the hull can sit on those. And we should be pretty safe to um, to do this. I'll position it properly in a sec. Now, the the parts. Now I have pre-painted um, this entire sprue. This is sprue. What was it? D or B? B. There's two B. B for boats, etc. I was right, rather nicely done by Zavesta. B for boats. All the boats are on there. So I pre-painted everything uh, in Stonerez white and gave it a really good coat. And these are basically the last of the parts that need to go on. The last of the plastic parts. From after this, after the um, torpedo net booms and the boats, it's all brass. Well, what we'll do now is I will um, trim these booms off here. And like everyone seems to do, the join is in the most annoying position in the middle. Now, I had considered replacing these with brass. And um, that is an option. But unfortunately, they have a bit of forming. They have a little flat end at one point and they have a foot. They have a little foot here. And that foot has to sit on a, um, a little step. There's a little step all the way along the hull. Okay, well, 
um, enough waffling about this. Let's get on and I will cut these um, torpedo booms from the sprues. And um, away we go. Now, you've got to be careful about the order. That's the only last thing I'll say on this. Um, yeah, the the, um, the booms are basically all B3, 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 until you get to the after the ship. And then you've got a couple of B28s, a B29 and a B18. And there is also a... Um, a big boom here which is actually for the boats this is actually for for boat um, mooring and retrieval and what have you folds out from the hull we'll talk about that later as well so i have a better solution for that okay let's get on i'm going to make up all the b3s and then i will cement them on to the side of the hull and then i'll talk about the problems with that I've got all seven of the um, B3 parts and uh, there's the middle piece as you saw the, where it joined on the sprue that's cleaned off very careful um, as you go along it looks like there's another little bit here that needs cleaning off no 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 that actually fits to a little bump on the hull and it goes there's the foot well, the step that the foot's going to sit on, so on. So all I did was I scraped a little bit of my paint off there on that um, that little bump, which is going to sit on that little bump. And I also made sure I cleaned the paint off the bottom of the foot. You won't see that's too bloody small. Ridiculous. So that all being said, you then know that it should go on only one way because that bump and that foot basically match up. And it's a fiddly, horrible little job. That looks easy, doesn't it? Should be as easy as that. Yeah, well, it's not. Here we go. I'll attempt to do this one on camera. I'll probably only do one on camera. Because quite frankly, this, once it's all painted, turns out to be a bit of a, uh, bit of a nightmarish job. So what I found the first thing to do was to um, make sure all your joints are nice and clean. So I said I've cleaned them off on the, uh, on the booms. Now... That's where it's got a cement to. There's a little bump there. Also give me something to aim for. And the bottom of the foot sort of sits on there somewhere. Or is this on top of it? I can't remember. I think it sits up against it. Oh no, it sits on top of it. Well there you go. It sits on top of it. So I've actually scraped the wrong bit off as usual. Okay, so bumping everything. This is a task that is well beyond my fumbling fingers, quite frankly. And I say this will be so much easier. So a daub there, a daub there. Make sure you've got this around the right way. You don't have much wriggle room at all. On there and on there. And it drops. So I just cursed and swore doing the other ones. They roll around and go wherever they bloody want to go. And it'll lift all your paint. And generally makes a bloody mess. I tried so many different ways of trying to do this. See if there was a good method. Quite frankly, sometimes they, they want to go on and sometimes they don't, like that. Um, they're a pain. And you have got 11 of them to put on. Um, you could use slower setting glue, and I tried that, but that generally, in my case, tends to go everywhere. Oh. This is what happens. You see, they so, it's so fiddly. They are so small, you can only hold them by the very edge. The bloody things fall all over the place. I don't even know if that's correct way up. So this is why I would advise do these little bastards at the start. When you don't have paint on your model, when you're not worried about wrecking things so much, and you just basically put them in place and maybe drop some glue on. See, I, I really struggle. I don't know what the hell the method is for doing these it's quite frankly nothing worked for me <laughs> it 
see everything I try, it falls out of place. These really give me the shits, these things. They really do. I have no... If somebody's got a method of doing this crap, let me know. It won't help me this time because it went too far gone. So it just won't sit anywhere. I'll try again. Admittedly, it's a warm day here. My tammy thin is drying fairly quick. Oh, this is one trick I did was to flood, to absolutely do what you shouldn't do and put a ton of bloody glue down. All right? Which at least here means it has less setting time. So I've got to get that round the right way there and just put the foot on. See, they are so small that the static charge from the, the, the actual static charge of the plastic to this means that they basically, they flop around. They just flop around. Fucking pain in the ass, these things. All right, that one's sort of in place and I don't give a shit. I get to this point, I really don't give a rat's ass now. <laughs> I really don't. And as you try and adjust one end, the other end falls out of place. Okay, something like that. And the tiniest thing, I mean, I had them, I had them stick to the actual glue applicator as I put them on. Walk away, walk away, walk away. I think we've got one done. All right, I won't bore you with trying to put them all on because that's taken like forever. I don't know if it's me. I mean, I do have wobbly hands and my coordination is not the best, which is another reason I pre-paint things and put them on because painting, trying to paint stuff when it's actually in place is just been impossible for me. I don't, I've lost all that coordination in my hands. Years of, years of all kinds of things, <laughs> especially now with the gout. Um, I have problems, but there's one done. I'll get on and do the other 10. There we go. All those booms are now on. I did get a little faster once I was sort of off camera. and I didn't have the performance anxiety. Um, certainly cementing the, um, the base piece in and even letting it get a bit tacky um, allowed you then to swing the top piece in and cement it in place. And maybe that's a technique that would work better put your teeth in Harry didn't work better they're so annoying these things I hate them the little shits <laughs> anyhow yeah if you can use a slow setting glue maybe as this is the easier attachment point cement them on there and allow it to get tacky that will allow you then to swing the top part about you'll be able to swing it out the way dab a cement swing it in press hold you know and away you go. I mean, having said that, even when I came back and added a bit more cement to make sure they stay, because I know you have to cement them two or three times, I found that out the other side, because they'll fall off. Because even though you've put a little bit of cement on, it's often not enough. And this could be a problem with the painting, pre-painting this. In fact, I think the whole problem is painting. If these weren't covered in paint, they'd probably adhere a bit better, these booms. If the hull wasn't covered in paint as well, everything would go together better and it probably would be a lot easier. See, I'm so worried about putting damage to the paint by putting the tweezers in that you don't want to press too close. So my advice, don't do as I've done and paint the bloody thing. Do it all earlier on. Back in step one or two, whenever you put the hull halves together, put your booms on then. Cement them in. It should be a lot easier, a lot less mucking around. You're less likely to damage anything. You've got no fiddly bits in the way. And then when you go to paint it, because as it is, I'm going to have to repaint these anyway. Because they get so scratched up after sanding that they need repainting. All right, well, there's a top tip for you. Don't do what Harry Houdini does, because he's a friggin' idiot. <laughs> Try it the other way. Try and do those basically early on. It might be a lot easier. Anyhow, they're on, and they do look nice once they're in place, so that's quite good. Now, on to something a bit more fun and hopefully a little less stressful. At least it, it was on the other side. I've already done the other side. The, um, the boats. Now, I pre-painted the sprue again. Like this was the whole sprue that, um, the bee sprue that both the booms and the boats were on. Hence why it was called the bee sprue. <laughs> and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in the, um, the veneer. There's a veneer that goes in. 
because if you see the um, the bottom of those lifeboats, sorry about the wobbling, let me see if I find another hand, there we go. See the bottom of the wobbles? Now you could paint them brown, but I have some wood veneer that goes in there. And um, it's actually quite easy to put in. It looks difficult, but it isn't. Let me show you that. At least it's something simple and easy. I'm going to show you how to do that. So here's these little boats. And um, they've already got some nice detail in there, which you could quite frankly just paint if you wanted to. But um, why paint when you can veneer? Yes. So these are all the um, little wood veneer um, pieces that fit in there. Now, when I first looked at these, I thought, oh no, do I have to pull out each one of these tiny little boards and try and fit into the little spaces. I thought, oh, goodness me, that'll take forever. And then I realised, actually, it's not that difficult and I'm making it too hard. And um, let me show you why. And let me show you how easy this can be. First, we need the right one for the right one. Checking my instructions. I can see here the boats are not necessarily in scale, I can tell you, because that's the tiniest one. And um, they're all the same size in this diagram. But anyhow, you can sort of see from the shape and the way they are and the number of things. So the biggest boat, which is this one, will probably be this one here, number eight, because it's got the most number of two, three, four, eight, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, seven. One's got seven, one's got eight. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Harry can any can count. So there you go. So if you've got this wood veneer thing, yeah, that's a bit misleading because they're all different body. You know, this one here looks bigger than that one there. It's not. That boat's actually larger. But um, there's eight and then eight. That's 16, okay? So if you look at this, it looks like, oh dear, I've got to cut each one out and put it in. Now, there is no way in hell that I could do that. They are too small. They're too fiddly. There's just not going to happen. But here's what I managed to figure out, okay? So I need number eight. Number eight is the one I need. So... That's number eight there, okay? So what we'll do is we'll cut number eight out. And the beauty with these um, wood hunter decks is they just have tiny little, almost like sprue points, <laughs> except it's wood. So tabs, if you like. They have these tiny little wood tabs. All we've got to do is run a knife over there as the rest of it's all cut out nicely. And I think nearly there. The only thing I've got to do is break the film. There's a film, plastic film on the back of this, which is the reason it's not sticking to my cutting board at the moment. So once I've cut all the tabs, break the film, and with a bit of luck, that piece pops out. Okay? So that piece, and as always, you always dry fit before you commit. So that piece fits there. At this point, my little brain started to realise something. Goodness me, that actually looks quite good as it is. I thought, I'll just stick it in like that. And this led to a very clever thing happening. Wow, serendipitous because of laziness. Yeah, that'll fit right in there and glue in. And guess what? Once it's in, you can then actually push all the little pieces down into the grooves. Saves you cutting it all up, which I would never be able to do. So let me show you what I'm on about here. Because... Um, this really is quite easy. Now, first you've got to get this bloody plastic film off. And the only way I figured out how to do that is you scratch and scrape it. Let me move this out of the way. You scratch and scrape the bloody stuff until it starts to lift. Bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll have to do it from this side. Here we go. And it peels off. Make sure you're working on the right side. Just scratch and scrape the other side. You'll wreck it all. Okay, so there we go. So that's on my blade, ready to go. Okay, with a bit of luck, it only do its final sticky once it's in place. Shiny side, it's got the glue. So we'll put that down. 
you're going to boot off. Hang on. Right, so that is now in place, okay? And here's the magic, here's the magic. Because as I started to rub it, like I didn't realise I could do this, as I started to rub it, I realised the profile of the plastic actually pushed the little pieces down. And then I realised if you went in and cut those little tab points, because there's only two little things, You can see them just. This camera's probably only going in as far as it can. Well, of course it's going in as far as it can. What I mean is this camera can only see as much as it can see. So down they go. And they have now fallen. Whether you can actually see that on camera or not, but it is completely evident here. So what we have here, there actually is a 3D thing happening. If you can see it actually there's relief easy as that okay so um, i'll go through and trim those other bit there and, and make sure that those pieces sit down because at the moment they're not sitting fully flush because they need their little um you can actually hear them go pop ones that haven't already broken free and it's so simple so I don't know what the um, woodhunter was thinking, that you would actually pull all those bits off. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, at this point, is um, pull the spine out of it. Why you want to do that, I don't know, because you're only going to paint that brown anyway. So you could actually probably get in there and lift the spine out, but why bother? The whole thing's supposed to be a wooden colour, and that's it. It's done. So how about that? Now, the only other thing I have to do is I've got to basically put a little bit of brown on, um, on the back of there and um, then assemble the boat halves and paint them. And um, I won't go into detail about that because they took forever. So what we're going to do is I'll magically show you, here's some I did before. And using that exact technique, I've um, got these all done, see? Works out really well. And it's not too hard. The, um, generally speaking, the, at least the lifeboats come in two halves. You've got to basically cement together, uh, as you saw from the, the sprue. And that allows you to pre-paint everything. I pre-paint everything on the sprue. All the brown I painted on the sprue. And I, as I say, I put the wood veneer in on the sprue. Now the black line is um, a bit tricky. But the easiest way that I found, um, because basically it sits nicely along there, so you can you can just run a brush level across the top, is I just must. Just very simply must. And then very carefully with the dry, almost dry brushing on the paint, I, um, I managed to get my white, black lines reasonable. I mean, you're seeing it here blowing up. But quite frankly, when you look at it at a distance, they look fine. So um, let's put those on the model now and see how the whole thing looks now with its booms and its davits and its guns and, and its boats, because this ends the plastic part of the build. There's, there's no more plastic. That's it. Every single piece of plastic has been built. I'll give you a quick look at the... Uh, whoop, just destroyed it. I'll give you a quick look at the motorboat. Bit fraggle. Um, uh, it's quite cute. It's got a little gun at the top there, and it actually has little funnels as well. Not funnels, vents. It has a funnel, has vents, and um, yeah. Took a bit of painting for me because again wobbliness. So there's a lot of masking and very much dry brushing so that I don't spill paint everywhere, and then just running the final colours over. But I'm very happy with my boats. All right, let's see how this all went together because this video has gone on long enough. <laughs> And here she is with the boats. They're all in. They're not cemented, they're just dry fitted for the moment. And the little one on the far side, so nobody will see it, because otherwise it tucks in behind this one here. So you, you don't get to see it really. But um, they look lovely, I think. I'm very proud of those. They took me quite a while. I mean, it took me a month to do those boats, but I was very busy with work and then I was unwell. And so it really, it's not that it takes you a month to do the boats, it's just that. I was doing other things, so it's rather strange. <laughs> a month has gone by since I started doing them. But I'm very pleased with them. I'm going to um, rig them. I'll rig down from the, um, 
on the davits. I've still got to get in and do some detail painting on the davits. If I thought ahead too with those those davits, um, after looking at the photo etch ones, which you can get, they're um, the, the formers or the the metal has holes all through it, and I could have got in with my very fine pin vise with a very small drill, and I could have drilled all those out. But it's too late now. There's no way I'm doing that now that it's all in place. But um, if you're building this um, this ship, and there's nothing wrong with these these plastic davits, they're they're very good. They're very well detailed. You may also choose to um, drill through, and it's pretty obvious. Um, I might do a little close up pick there so you can see what I'm about. And you could um, give them a bit more detail. As it is, I'll run a wash on them. That'll bring out a lot. Now um, damages. While while I had this thing rolled over on this side. I, I did the um, booms on the other side I managed to break off one of my barrels um, which again put those on absolutely last before you're doing anything and what I was thinking putting those on the um, these ones have all been repainted all these booms have had a touch up of paint and as I've said in the past the um, the valley ho white that I've got matches the styler is white perfectly so that you can actually add a little bit of paint over the top and it all blends in this is all going to get sealed now. Basically, once I've got those um, those boats finished for both sides, everything's going to get sealed with a clear matte coat. And um, I'll make sure I go through and just check there are any touch-ups. Everything will get sealed, ready for washes, weathering, and just protect it because I found even handling the little boats, I'm rubbing off some of that black line, <laughs> which is annoying because it's a bucket of paint and I'm stuffed up and going back to touch it up. I'll just figure out which one's got that on the inside and... Put it, um, put it that way so you don't see the damage I've caused. But yeah, everything needs sealing at this point because uh, otherwise I'm doing damage. Now one other thing, the um, this boom. Now, this boom here um, in the kit is um, this part here, which has got three sprue joints. So you're going to have to clean all that up, stuff around. And it's only a tube. It's just slightly round on the ends. It's only a tube. So I went into my evergreen sprue and I found exactly the same diameter, cut it and rounded off the ends, and I have made I have made booms for both sides. So I haven't put that one on yet. So it's as easy as that. So that was um, you know, like with, with anything with the kits, if it's a cylinder and it's only a straight cylinder, I go to my evergreen sprue. And it costs that stuff costs, you know, it's ten dollars. I think I bought it three years ago. I still haven't used up all the tubes. So um, that's that's really good stuff. Um, if you want to basically replace parts or quickly get cylinders and tubes and rods very quick could do it brass as well but I think this was just under the size of my minimum brass and anyhow it's a lot easier to paint plastic and evergreen was white so white on white made it very easy to paint anyhow that's where I'm going to leave it with this video and as I said that is all the plastic done that I'm going to do on this kit the masks are brass the ladders are going to be brass, the um, railings are all going to be brass, the yard arms that go on, they'll all be brass. It's basically brassy ass from now on. <laughs> so that's it. All right, well, I hope you're not too bored with all my fumbling and fiddling, but um, that's where we've got to with the Varag. Very happy with how that looks, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.